One of the most incompetent people who was hired to work in the Trump White House has, at least for now, publicly turned against Donald Trump as his latest ploy for tricking television bookers into putting him on TV. And on this one, I got to admit, Donald Trump is absolutely right when he tweeted today, Scaramucci, who like so many others had nothing to do with my election victory, is only upset that I didn't want him back in the administration where he desperately wanted to be. Also, I seldom had time to return his many calls to me. He just wanted to be on TV, exclamation point. And then came this in a Bloomberg report. He worked at the White House for less than two weeks and is certainly no expert on this president. White House spokeswoman Stephanie Grisham said, this is all so self-serving on his part and the media plays right into it. And this will surely be the only time that I agree with the current White House press secretary. Anthony Scaramucci is a lying fraud who supported a lying fraud for president. He then won a power struggle with the other lying frauds working in the White House at the time and got himself appointed White House communications director, a job he was fired from before he could actually start the job because of an interview that he gave to The New Yorker in which he announced his plans for the White House staff. I'm going to fire every one of them. The entire place will be fired over the next two weeks. He also said to The New Yorker, when comparing himself very favorably to Steve Bannon, I'm not trying to blank my own blank. Now, remember, Anthony Scaramucci lies about everything, so it is entirely possible that he was and continues to try to blank his own blank. Anthony Scaramucci has never appeared on this program because he is one of the most ridiculous characters in the Trump freak show, and he is a proven liar and proven liars aren't welcome here, especially the clowniest of the clowns in the Trump world. Anthony Scaramucci's break with the president, if it holds, which is actually unlikely because this is Scaramucci we're talking about, will mean the loss of at most one Trump vote in the state of New York, which Donald Trump is going to lose anyway. The words Anthony Scaramucci have always meant absolutely nothing in American politics, and they always will. His new claim that he is looking for a Republican to challenge Donald Trump for the Republican nomination means that he remains so flawlessly ignorant about American politics that he doesn't even know that Donald Trump already has a serious Republican primary challenger, the former Republican governor of Massachusetts, William Weld, who will join our discussion here after this break. Here is Iowa Republican voter Kate Miller, who has had enough of Donald Trump. Well, I'm a lifelong conservative. Um, I, I actually campaigned door to door for Chuck Grassley his first year as a Senate campaign, a, a Senate candidate. Um, but I cannot vote for Donald Trump. I just he is he is not a conservative, and I don't think he's a good man. And when you watch um, a cabinet member after cabinet member fall away from him, I just can't vote for him. Joining our discussion now, Bill Weld, former Republican governor of Massachusetts. He is running for the Republican presidential nomination against President Trump. Governor Weld, thank you very much for joining us tonight. It sounds like uh, Kate Miller is ready to hear from you when you get to Iowa. Well, I hope that's so, Lawrence. And uh, I hope that maybe next time you'll tell us what you really think about Anthony Scaramucci. <laughs> Uh, but seriously, I think uh, I think the mooch may have set uh, may have settled on uh, a valuable metaphor, a durable metaphor in Chernobyl, because uh, that suggests the idea of a, a meltdown and whatever you call it, uh, meltdown or uh, unhinged or untethered. Uh, I, I do sense uh, a rumbling there that um, the president has been obliged to spend so much time dealing with things inside his own head, uh, notably the emotions of anger and fear, that, uh, you know, it may be that uh, at some point in the not-too-distant future, he's going to uh, seemingly be overwhelmed by the demands of his, uh, his job. Uh, and I, as you know, I think he's going to lose by a lot next year, and I think partly it's because the 
U.S. House is going to recognize that they don't give advisory opinions. They have to have real facts, and so they need a real investigation to get real facts. And that takes eight or ten months, not good months for Mr. Trump. Uh, governor, when, when you were governor of Massachusetts early 1990s, you supported an assault weapons ban there. Uh, in the aftermath now of last week of Dayton and of El Paso, uh, do you think you can argue an assault weapons ban to Republican primary voters? I, I think when people say assault weapons, a lot of them mean automatic weapons, and those are, as you know, already illegal. You have to be a federally licensed firearms dealer to own fully automatic weapon. Uh, I'm kind of nervous about all, all this talk about uh, uh, super universal background checks on steroids. Uh, people are even talking about licensing all weapons out there. There are 300 uh, million rifles out there in private hands. And you know me, Lawrence, I kind of uh, tend toward the libertarian side. I regard private gun ownership as kind of a bulwark against possible government overreaching. And if you look through history, you know, Hitler makes it impossible for the Jews to own guns or firearms. And it's, when the knock comes at the door, they can't resist. They go to the concentration camps. Joe Stalin killed 20 million people. Idi Amin in Uganda, after they outlawed guns, killed everyone who wasn't part of his coalition. I do think that red flags and uh, hooked to uh, signs of mental illness or previous uh, violence uh, reported by a co-worker or a family member, that's fine. Uh, you just—you uh, can—in this country, you can get in front of a judge in six hours, and the judge can decide whether the person's a danger to themselves or, or others. And I think that would be uh, a, mu a much more direct way to go at these mass shootings than saying, we want to license 300 million rifles. Well, the, the licensing— uh argument is about sales that go on now. In order to, in order to go to a, a weapon store or purchase something now, you'd have to be licensed to do that. Uh, in some of the proposals, you'd have to be insured, just like an automobile, just like uh, if you get a new car tomorrow, what you'd have to do with a new car. There's plenty of people who have old cars uh, out in the backyard that aren't registered. No one's saying they have to register those. Yeah, that's right. I mean, when I got my first shotgun, I sure as hell had to have taken a hunter safety course. So I'm not saying you can't put any conditions on the acquisition of uh, firearms. But uh, I do want to point out that throughout history, when the government has made it, has imposed stringent conditions upon the mere ownership of, uh, of firearms, having nothing to do with safety or violence or threats, uh, that has often ended in disaster. So. <laughs> Gun ownership by itself should not be the focus here. But no one's talking about uh, guns in general. They're talking about mm. these particular kinds of weapons, these high-powered weapons that can uh, fire so many bullets with those magazines. They're not talking about revolvers. They're not talking about ah, handguns. Ah, well, you said, another, you said another magic word, which is magazine. And this one of these two fellows that uh, did the shooting over the weekend was walking around the downtown with a, a magazine holding 100 rounds. No, that, that's, uh, that's not a guy given right. Uh, but uh, going after just uh, pure a rifle or a shotgun by itself, even if it's a five-shot semi-automatic, those are—that's the standard—the AR-15 is the standard uh, U.S. military rifle. Pe people do use five-shot rifles in hunting. So that's not—that that does not shock my conscience as a weapon. Uh, if you make it fully automatic by removing a pin, I used to prosecute people for that. That's a crime, because that, that transforms uh, it into an automatic weapon. But I, I think there's, uh, I don't think that's all well understood. But, but I do think that the, the conversation is healthy, because I think the, the red flag laws where people can get uh, an injunction from a, a judge or an order that someone surrender their weapon if they have a sufficient history of violence or violent tendencies, or like one of these guys carried around a list in high school of people he wanted to kill. Uh, there was one of the terrible cases two years ago where the FBI had had open investigations on the fellow who committed the crimes twice and had to close them because then there was, there was a rule then that you had to close a case in six months. That's not how the criminal justice system works. It takes longer than that often to build these cases. But yep. focusing on the people, uh, you know, the, the potential uh, people involved, I think, is the shortest way to get there.
Governor Wells, we, have not just, we, we haven't just directly. run out of time. We've gone into overtime. Uh, we've got to get out of here. Thank you very much for joining us. And please let Anthony Scaramucci know that you are running for president as a Republican. You know, I, I will call him tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.